Good morning, family. Praise God. We're here on another, uh, the 2nd November Sunday. Amen. God is great. Hallelujah. This is the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, senior pastor and founder of All Christ Love Ministries. And I'm here for today with the first word from the pastor's study. Today, we're going to look into the Old Testament, amen. And we have a scripture today from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's going to be verses 14 through 17. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 14 through 17. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, which if this is your first time tuning in and you're not familiar with this, um, I prefer the New King James Version because it's the closest to the original King James Version. What it does for us, it gives us somewhat more contemporary language in certain places without losing the context of the scripture. So instead of saying, thee thou and doest, it's saying, you, me, and does. So that's why I, I favor that version. It's more of a translation than a transition. Amen. First uh, Chronicles 20 verses 14 through 17. And thus says the Lord, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jalel, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And just so you know, the Levites uh, came from the 12 tribes of Benjamin, of, uh, I'm sorry, Jesus, uh, from the 12, tri 12 tribes of Israel, um, from Jacob's son, Levi. Those were the Levites. Anyway, in the midst of the assembly, and he said, listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Zs, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord is with you. I'm just going to ask you really quick to stand in the gap as I pray. Merciful Father, can I come before you in the name of Jesus? Thanking and praising you, O God, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. Thanking and praising you, God, for another opportunity to do something right in your sight in the name of Jesus, God. Right now, Father, I pray that you sit me down and you stand up, O God. Decrease me and increase you, none of me and all of you. Instruct my mind and direct my vocal cords on what to say and do before these your sheep. And transform me into the man you would have me be in Christ Jesus, Father. Let the word that comes forward today from you, God, imbue itself in the hearts and minds of the listeners, O oh God, so that they may not be just hearers of the word, God, but doers of the word, God. Father, I pray that you would clean up and correct this, your servant, God, your instrument right now in the name of Jesus, God, because it's me, it's me, it's me who's standing in the need of prayer as we give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So. I thought of this scripture because I thought of what we've all been living through for the past several days, really the past four years. Um, we have been indeed in a battle for the soul of the nation. I'm loath to bring politics into it, but I do see a lot of evil things that have been going on where greed and money have been the focus and not people. 
it makes entirely no sense to me that we live in what's supposed to be the richest country in the world and we have homeless people. It makes no sense to me that our young people go out at night and we have to worry if they get stopped for a simple traffic violation that they may not make it home. Uh, it, there are a lot of things that just don't make any sense to me. Why the rich pay less in taxes and the poor make up the difference. It doesn't make sense to me. But here we are in this world. And that's what brought me to this scripture. Um, because I need somebody to understand today that aside from the national struggle, which I've just spoken about, which affects everybody, we have personal struggles that affect us. And we need to be reminded that God is with us. And when he's with us, we good. We good. You good. I need you to know that you good. Because like the scripture tells us, the battle is not ours. The battle is God's. Yes, it is. I know what it's like when you have that one neighbor that just constantly does things because they want to live in their world. They want to run the whole world. Uh, and, you know, they, they got to be special, you know. They have to be special. They self-appointed themselves as special. Where they park in front of your house or across your driveway or in your driveway. Where they steal your newspaper. Where their kids just leave their toys and stuff destroy your front yard. What about that person on your job? I know this is a big one. That person on your job. That one person that they always start and stuff. They gossips. They're always trying to burn somebody. They don't do their job, but they, they try to hide themselves from scrutiny by messing with you. You understand? Uh, they, they These are the people that get on your last nerve. Not the first one, not the middle one. They get on that last nerve, the one that, that, that you got across that one before you break and do something you're not supposed to do. Um, there's always that person in your class at school that wants to cause trouble, that wants to pick, that wants to bully, that wants to be a wise guy, okay? Uh, 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 and and what will happen is that we will retaliate. We may black out on them. We may put them down on the ground. We may kick their behind. We may hurt them. We may rat them out. We may do something. But I want to tell you something. If you have God as your ally, if Jesus Christ is in your heart, you won't have to do a thing to these people. Now, let, let's not get it twisted, okay? Jesus never told us to be fools. If somebody attacks you, yes, by all means, you have to step up to him and, and, and do whatever you have to do to survive. But when you got those annoying folk that just want to keep something going on, if you've got Christ in your life, not only do you know that you don't have to do anything, you will know that God is going to take care of it. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I want to share with you a situation that I had several years ago where an individual tried to involve themselves into my life. They did something going behind my back. And my inclination was to, I mean, when I found out about it, see the person that, that they tried to use to get involved in the mix came back and told me everything that that person said. I, I need you to understand that the devil will reveal you when you're doing wrong. The devil will reveal you when it's least convenient for you. And he will use a way that you never thought he was going to use to reveal you. And that's what took place. So here's a person that's trying to do something behind my back. Amen. And, and, and the person that he was trying to use behind my back to do it, came back and told me. Needless to say, I was heated. 
Yes, I was. I, I wanted to, man, <laughs> what I wanted to do, right? But God spoke to my heart. See, that's the one of the things too. You got to learn how to listen to God when he speaks to your, to your heart, to your very soul, to your gut, if you will. When he tells you, no, 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 no. He see, you don't have to use words like we would expect you because that's the way that we speak with each other. He doesn't have to use words, amen. He speaks to the heart. He speaks to the soul. And he spoke to mine and he said, no, do nothing. I know you can do it. I know you're mad enough to do it. I know I equipped you with the capability to do it, but I need you to know that the battle is not yours. It's mine. I'm in control here anyway. And over the course of time, a couple of years, I watched this person deteriorate before my eyes in ways that, I mean, yeah, I could have beat him down for a day, but God beat him down for years for what he did wrong. I watched it happen and he did it in ways that I could never do because it, it took away his livelihood kind of took away his freedom. And, 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 you know, the Bible tells us, it says, uh, do no wrong to my prophets, do no harm to my people. So the thing of it is, if you know Jesus Christ and the power of God is with you, the battle is not yours. You good. God got you. And I got news for you. A lot of times, a lot of times, there are situations that we knowingly get into but shouldn't have gotten into. And we do sustain a little bit of chastisement in that. But God still got it. You still good because you don't get the full weight of what God could release upon you. You good. The battle is not yours. We've been fighting the battle for several years now. We've been fighting battles against authorities that have placed themselves in positions, self-appointed, but I want you to know one thing. Some of these authorities do not know God. Some of these authorities are not empowered by God. But if you know Jesus Christ, you are empowered by God. You may have heard me say it before, but I'm going to say it to you again this very morning. With Jesus in your life and the power of God at your back, when you good, I need you to know. Donald Trump can't tell you what you can't do. The mayor can't tell you what you can't do. Your neighbor, your family, your peeps, none of them can tell you what you can and can't do. Because if it's holy in God's sight, you can do it. Never let people tell you that your kids will never amount to anything. Never let people tell you that your kids can't learn something. Never let people tell you that you can't learn something. Don't listen, stop listening to people because most of the people that will tell you this kind of thing have given up on life already. They don't know God, they've given up on life and they're not trying to see you raise up because it's that good old crabs in the barrel mentality. Oh, I'm talking about the haters. Yes, I am. But I want you to know this very morning and you can quote me on this later. You can do it a year from now, 10 years from now, but I'm gonna tell you the same thing. When you have Jesus in your life, when God has got your back, you can do anything. You can be who you wanna be. You can know what you wanna know because God has got you. The battle is not yours to fight. Jesus has you in the palm of his hand. Jesus is God. Jesus is the, 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 the through way that gets us back to the kingdom of heaven. But he is God as well. So you need to understand when you got Jesus in your life, when God has got your back, you can do what you need to do. You can be who you need to be. 
If it's holy in God's sight, he will bless you. When you stumble and fall, he will pick you up. When you think it's impossible, God will show you it's, it's not impossible because he makes a way out of no way. Only he can make a way out of no way. You better stop hiding in your closet. You better raise your head from the ground. You better look towards the, the, the mountains and the sunrise because God is there and he's waiting to give it to you. Now you want to sit back. You want to mope. You want to cry. You want to suffer. But if you know God, you shouldn't want those things because God will bring you out. You just have to let him bring you out. Stop being an impediment to yourself. Stop listening to other people. Stop it. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. In the book of Matthew chapter 7. In the book of Matthew chapter 7. Jesus says, now you being evil, give good gifts to your children. How much more will your father in heaven give you? We are evil because we're sinners. And we still try to give our kids the best. So how much more will God give to us as his children? You good. If you know God, if you know Jesus, if you're working to be closer to him, if you're doing your very best to do what's right in his sight, you good. If you're trusting God, you good. You good. As long as you did your part, you good. Make no mistake about it. But you got to do, you got to know Jesus and you got to do your part. There's no question in my mind. I don't worry about fights anymore. Now, I, I, I want you to understand clearly, I ain't stupid. I'm not running in front of any trucks or buses anytime soon. I'm not doing that. Uh, you know, you have to use God-given common sense. But what I do know is, if I have to defend myself, that's one thing. But if it's somebody that just want to be picking for picking and causing trouble, you know what? God got them. And God's going to do to them worse than I could ever do. Because the battle is not mine. The battle is in the air. The Bible tells us that. It's fought. It's not fought amongst men and principalities. It's fought in the heavens. And here's the good news. Satan already is defeated. He just doesn't know it yet. Well, sure, he does stuff to us here and now. He does things. But the good news is he is defeated. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this point, what I want to do is offer you a free gift. If you do not know Jesus Christ, or maybe you kind of do, but you're churched out and you've lost your dedication to him and you need to revitalize yourself. I want to offer you this free gift today. But you got to mean it from the heart. Because you need, you, we want you to be good. We want you to be good with God. We want the battle to be fought for you. We want you to have that confidence. So what I want to do is offer you this free gift. And the only thing you got to do is mean it from your heart. You don't have to say it aloud. You don't have to say it in a group. You can go in your private prayer closet. But I need you to say it from the heart. Rededicate or dedicate your life back to God. Come on home to Jesus. You may have heard the preacher say that tomorrow is not promised. I stopped by today to tell you that two minutes, two seconds from now is not promised. You need to know the way back to heaven. And the only way to do that is through Jesus Christ. John 14 and six says, 
I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to the Father except through me. We can take that step together right now. And like I said many times, all you have to do is mean it from your heart. Repeat after me. Father, I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived a life without sin and died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him. And now he sits at your right hand, interceding on my behalf. Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Be my Lord, my savior, my master, and my friend. Holy Ghost, seal me until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said this the first time from the heart, or if you just said it right now from the heart, even if you said it before, I want to welcome you into or back into the body of Christ, the family of Christ. You are a joint heir with Christ and an heir of God and subject to the benefits that come with it. You're good. You're good. Don't think, though, that you're going to go out there and just roll over people. But in times when you're facing those battles and those struggles, you need to know that you don't have to face them alone, that God has got you, and he will take care of it. Amen. A couple of things that you need to do. First, make sure that you associate yourself with a Bible preaching and teaching church whether it be this one or one that's more local to you. Don't associate yourself with one that promises miracles by how much cash you give them. Don't associate with yourself with a church that promises you the world, uh, promises you all kinds of miracles and so forth, uh, you know, and, and makes a focus on wealthy possessions and money. Um, that's not really of God, okay? That's prosperity gospel, and they're getting rich off of it, and you are not. Um, don't fall for that trap. Get yourself a Bible preaching and teaching ministry, whether it be this one or one more local to you, because we speak truth to power here. Amen. And uh, that's what I'm going to give you, whether it's, you find it entertaining or not. Um uh, Maybe something that you might not want to hear, but I'm going to give you the truth. Truth plus knowledge equal and um, times love equals power. That's my formula. Second, just like with your girlfriend or your wife, you need to know God. How can you love God if you don't know him? And the only way for us to really know him is through his word. So you need to get yourself a Bible. I recommend the New King James Version. It's written in more contemporary language. It's a translation, not a transition. Uh, they replace a couple of the words that are old language like thee and thou and doest and replace it with you, me, and does. So it's digestible. I recommend that you pray before you study the Bible. Ask God to open your heart and your mind to his divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Don't read it like any other book. Read some scripture, sit back, meditate on it so that the Holy Spirit may come to you and show you what it means. We also have Bible study here. We have telebible study every Wednesday at, um, praise God, at 6 Mountain Time, 
7 Central Time and 8 Eastern Time every Wednesday. Um, we're on Facebook Rooms. For my friends, um, if you're viewing this now and uh, you're one of my friends, you'll see a notification pop up on your home page. You'll see that we have the room open for ACLM Telebible Study. If you want to get somebody who isn't my friend involved in it, you can always share the post with the invitation in it and uh, tag the person that you want to be involved in it and they will get the invitation to be able to enter the room because I make it public. Um, but at any event, you must study to show yourself approved and not be ashamed, but a right divider of the word of truth. So please get yourself a Bible. And for the time being, that's it. I'm so glad that you came and spent some time with us today. Amen. I hope that the word was a blessing to you, um, that, that you found strength in that right now in this country, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of in a celebratory mood because the oppression of the last four years has kind of come to an end. And uh, people were dancing in the streets, even in other countries. My God, a bell that Philadelphia gave to France uh, hundreds of years ago. Um, they rang, they normally ring it on Sundays, but they rang it yesterday. Um, God is marvelous. God is great. God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He's always there. He knows all, sees all, and does all. And he takes care of his own. Yes, he does. For God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that those who believe in him shall not see death, but see life everlasting. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ Love Ministries. Thanking you again for those who are tuned in now and those who will watch later. Um, and this has been the first word from the pastor's study. God bless you. Peace and blessings until we see each other again.